Rice is an increasingly important crop in Africa. Throughout the continent, rice farmers have problems with weeds. If they're not controlled, these unwanted plants seriously reduce rice yields. Weed control is crucial, but not easy. Weeds are often removed by hand, but this takes a lot of time and energy. Often this job is done by women and children, who have to take time off from their other economic activities and school. I hand weed my rice field three times in a season. It takes a real long time for me to finish the job. I have to involve my family members and friends, as you can see, but it's still tough. I get fungus and cuts on my hands. There are other options to control weeds. With the rotary weeder, for instance, you can save a lot of time. Another potentially effective labour-saving way to control weeds is to use herbicides. Herbicides are chemicals that kill weeds. If applied correctly, herbicides will save time and you can get a good yield. However, as shown here, they're often not applied in the right way. The advantage of using herbicides is that it saves time when weeding. But if we had an alternative, easier weed control method, it might be better. Because herbicides also have some side effects. So herbicides are not always effective and can even harm your crop, your health, or pollute the environment if not applied correctly. Chemical control should therefore be the last resort in the range of integrated weed management options and only when you really don't have enough time or when other control options have failed. If you have no other choice because of lack of labour, then make sure you apply herbicides in the right way to avoid negative effects as much as possible. You should use the right product at the right concentration, at the right application rate, with the right equipment at the right time and at the right spraying height. The general rule is that you should first assess the types of weeds growing in your field to find the right type of product to control them. Secondly, you must always carefully read and follow the instructions printed on the label of the product before using any product. Ask the agriculture extension officer, your neighbour or a relative to read the label for you if you have difficulties with it. In this video, we will provide some guidelines for the efficient and safe use of herbicides following these seven points. Number one, choose the right product. Number two, apply the appropriate time. Number three, manage water levels correctly. Number four, use the right dosage. Number five, choose appropriate equipment and check it before use. Number six, follow the correct application techniques. Number seven, respect all safety measures. Before we start, we'd like to point out one more time that most herbicides are poisonous and costly. They should only be applied when and where they are really needed and always in combination with other weed control methods. Herbicides can be used either as a preventative measure, applying the herbicides before the weeds emerge to avoid weed infestation, or as a curative measure to kill existing weeds. In any case, herbicides should be combined with other weed management measures, such as land preparation, including puddling and levelling, early season flooding, use of weed competitive rice varieties, using clean and good seed, and by row transplanting, as this will reduce the need for herbicides. The first step in using the herbicides efficiently and safe is by choosing the right product. There are many types of herbicides on the market, so you must know which one to choose. This herbicide is Ronstar. Ronstar kills weeds at an early stage. It is used between two to four days after transplanting. This herbicide here is 2,4-D. 2,4-D is a selective herbicide. It only kills broad-leaved weeds. It does not kill rice. 
Herbicides can differ in their suitability to crops as well as the weeds they target and it is important to apply the right type. Many herbicides are specific to certain types of weeds or to certain field conditions. Before using a herbicide you should know which type of weeds dominate your crop and whether the product indeed targets these weeds. Such information can be found on the label of the product. There are different categories of weeds and it is important to be able to recognize them in order to know which product to use. Farmers most frequently find grasses, sedges or broadleaf weeds in their fields. Sedges and grasses have long and slender leaves with parallel veins. Sedges can be distinguished from grasses as they always have smooth filled and non-segmented stems that can be round or angular. Although sometimes difficult to see, the stems of grasses are hollow. Grass stems can be round or flat but are never angular and they are always segmented. Broadleaf species are quite different from grasses and sedges as they have leaves with branch veins. These species often have a central taproot. Another difference that is important to make is between annual and perennial weeds. Annual weed species die after producing seeds, while perennial weed species continue to grow. Perennials often have underground root structures that enable them to survive superficial weed control measures. Some herbicides such as propanil only target annual species, while others may target more than one type of species. Hence, it is important to know that there are different types of weeds that require specific products for control. The label on the bottle will indicate the active compound of the product and which type of weeds this active compound targets. For instance, the active compound propanil is effective against grasses. The active compound bentazone controls sedges, while 2,4-D controls sedges and broadleaf weeds. Finally, there are a number of different manufacturers and distributors of herbicides around. Buying an original product from a renowned registrant or manufacturer will give you more certainty about reliability and effectiveness of the product. Indicators of reliability include a sealed bottle, clear information about the registrant or manufacturer, and production and expiry dates. The product should also be approved by official local authorities, such as the Tropical Pesticide Research Institute. Make sure the bottle is sealed and that the expiry date hasn't passed. Also make sure that the label is informative and readable. Some distributors don't supply enough information on the bottle. You should avoid such products. So remember, to avoid using unknown products or products without labels or without useful information on the label, because the label should help you choose the appropriate herbicide. I'm going to use a drug I usually use 2,4-D on my rice. Once I needed to spray my farm and so went to buy 2,4-D from the AgroVet. It was not available, but the AgroVet advised me to take another one that was similar to 4-D but didn't have any labeled instructions. He told me to use the same quantities as 2,4-D, but when I sprayed it on my crop, I was disappointed because I got poor results and the rice wilted. No weeds were killed, and it forced me to incur more expenses. Step 2. Application Timings the timing of herbicide application is an extremely important factor for effective herbicide use. If herbicides are applied too early or too late, you might not see any effect on weeds or you may even damage your crop, as shown here. Weeds are most harmful to the rice in the first six weeks after sowing or transplanting and herbicides are most effective when the weeds are still young. Spraying herbicides on rice at an early stage works well. I use 2,4-D, which kills broadleaf weeds and sedges. I then hand weed the remaining weeds. There are two main groups of herbicides, pre-emergent and post-emergent herbicides. The pre-emergent herbicides, such as Ronstar, should be applied before weeds emerge, and preferably before or just after sowing or transplanting. 
Post-emergence herbicides such as 2,4-D, Weedone, Stam, Solito and Bazagran are also known as contact herbicides as they have to be sprayed on the weeds to be effective. They can be applied only after the weeds emerge, but the herbicide should be applied when the rice crop is still at an early stage. Another group includes the broad spectrum herbicides such as Roundup or other products based on glyphosate. They are non-selective contact herbicides and will therefore also harm rice, like is shown here. They should be used only pre-sowing or pre-planting before the rice is in the field. So what is the best time to apply contact herbicides? Young weeds are more sensitive to herbicides than old ones, whilst rice plants get more sensitive with age. Therefore, you should apply contact herbicides when the weeds have one to three leaves and when the rice only has a few tillers. Indeed, no herbicide application will ever be 100% effective. You must make sure that surviving weeds are uprooted and removed before they mature and shed seeds. Information about the best application time can be found on the label of the product. It is very important to read them and follow the instructions. To summarise, apply pre-emergence herbicides before or right after sowing or transplanting when weeds have not yet emerged. Apply post-emergence herbicides when the weeds have emerged but before they reach the three-leaf stage, which is around two to three weeks after transplanting. Don't apply broad-spectrum herbicides in your crop, only before planting. Remember the label on the bottle contains important information on the right use of the product and should always be studied. Let's see what else is needed for effective application of herbicides. Step 3. Proper water management. A close look at what this farmer is doing shows that some herbicides are applied after the water is drained or before flooding the field. Does water management affect the effectiveness of herbicides? Let's listen to the experience of this farmer. When I want to use this particular herbicide, there should be just enough water because last season I sprayed in a flooded field and the herbicide did not work and the weeds did not die. Many herbicides are most effective when the field is drained one day before spraying and reflooded two to three days later. However, some herbicides, such as Londax, should be applied in a flooded field. In some cases, it works best when a very thin layer of water is maintained. But then the field should be well leveled. Again, you have to read the instructions to make sure you do the right thing. Now that we know which product to use and when, let's learn how it should be applied. Choosing the right equipment. First, you should check your equipment and test the backpack sprayer before use. The nozzle shape of your sprayer is important Use a fan-shaped nozzle. It should produce a uniform spray pattern of about one meter wide when held at knee height. If this is not the case, you should change the nozzle. You can check this using plain water. You should use low to moderate pressure levels so that the nozzle produces a regular fan-shaped shower. Prepare the solution with clean water as dirty water might block the spraying nozzle and the application will not be uniform. Appropriate protective equipment like masks, gloves, overalls and safety glasses are crucial. Step 5. Choosing the appropriate dosage. Always try to respect the dosage indicated on the label of the product. For measuring the volume of herbicides, you will need a measuring cap provided by your herbicide dealer. How do we know how much of the product we need to mix with water in the knapsack sprayer? If you use Ronstar as an example, the recommendation on the label says 2.5 litres per hectare, or 1 litre per acre. Divide the total quantity of herbicide needed per acre by the number of knapsack spray fillings you will need to cover this one acre. For instance, if you use 5 fillings of the knapsack sprayer per acre and you need to apply 1 litre of herbicide per acre, you need to mix 1 litre divided by 5, making 200 millilitres for each tank filling. Of course, these calculations should be adapted according to the volume of the sprayer and the application rate. If you need more or less fillings per acre, you need to apply less or more herbicide per filling. If you cannot find a measuring cap, you'll have to look for a convenient unit with a known volume that helps you with measuring the herbicide quantity. 
But make sure children aren't tempted to drink from it. Hence, don't use empty soda bottles. Now, how do we mix the product with water? First, fill the tank halfway with water. Pour the content of the measuring unit with the herbicide in the tank. Close the tank tightly and shake it carefully. Then open it and fill the tank completely with clean water. If you have prepared your land, drained or flooded the field according to the requirements, selected the right product and application time, checked your equipment and prepared the right mixture in the sprayer tank, you are almost ready to start with the application of the herbicide. Step 6. Choosing an appropriate application technique. You need to know at what height the herbicide should be applied and how fast you should pump and walk. The recommended height of the spraying nozzle is about 0.7 meters. That's usually just above your knee. The spray should be about one meter wide when the nozzle is held at knee height. Pump slowly and regularly, for example, once every two steps and walk at a constant and moderate speed. The recommended speed is one meter per second. Make sure you treat the entire crop by going through the crop following a systematic route. This is easier when you have transplanted or sown your rice in rows. If you walk too fast, you will need fewer refills, but the treatment will become less effective. It is very important to know that herbicide should never be applied when it is windy or shortly before or after rain to avoid the product being distributed to other places and becoming ineffective where it is needed. The best time to apply herbicides is in the early morning or evening. The use of protective clothes, boots, masks, gloves and glasses is important for safety reasons. All skin injuries like cuts and scratches must be covered before you start working with herbicides. You should also avoid, as much as possible, contact with bare skin. Mimi ni mpiga dawa wa kienyeji wa kutoka kijicha kisawasawa. Uwa natumia dawa... I normally spray herbicide without using any protective equipment. I don't have boots, overalls, and even a mask. I sometimes get effects from doing this. I get very bad headaches, flu, skin diseases, and sometimes tears come out of my eyes unexpectedly. This is all due to these herbicides. Remember to check the label and follow the recommendations. The label will also tell you what to do in case of contact or ingestion and will advise you on safe and effective application. After preparing the solution and application, carefully wash the measuring cap and the equipment. Don't forget to wash your hands and clothes with soap as well. Avoid washing in water that drains into irrigation systems and never eat or drink when you are handling herbicides or when you are close to someone handling or applying it. If the solution enters the eyes, rinse with lots of water and get medical help as soon as possible. Dispose empty containers carefully to avoid that children play with them. In summary, we have learned that weeds should be controlled in an integrated way and that herbicides can be an effective element of such an approach if other weed control options are not available or effective. Herbicides should be used with great care as they are toxic and can affect your health as well as the environment and crop. Use the appropriate herbicide, check the expiry date, Check if the bottle is sealed and if it contains a label with the name of the manufacturer and enough information on how to apply it properly. Apply the herbicides in early stages of the crop. Herbicides kill weeds when they are young and they kill rice plants when they are old. Walk at a moderate but constant speed and spray at knee height, making sure the spray covers about one meter width of the soil at each passing. If the herbicide requires this, drain the field one day before and reflood not later than three days after treatment. And always follow the instructions of the manufacturer on the label of the product or ask the advice of an extension officer. Natarajia, katika 
msimu huu I expect a big harvest this season. This is because I read the instruction on the herbicide label. Even though the cost of the herbicide was high, it will be a very good harvest. Indeed, with proper weed control, you can get good yields and thus increase your profits.